Let's catch up what's happening with Fiore for iOS. Hi, welcome to another Co Talk. I'm Ian Thane, and welcome to Stan Stadelman joining me from San Ramon. Hey, thanks. Excellent. So I'm I'm really pleased to have you back because you've been away for a little while, um, and uh, well, now the the SDK the, uh, for iOS has been out for about a month. We're at three zero. Uh, I had a hangout with Andreas and got low down on a few things, but as you are you are Mister. Uh, Fiori for iOS. We thought you'd ha catch up with you. Uh, so I'm going to ask you straight away, what's new and what's exciting in the world of 3.0 with Fiori for iOS? Sure. Um, yeah, so so we, we released 3.0 um, end of September. Um, so it has been out for a little bit. Um, and on the UI side, we really had um, three major feature categories. We had a, a new calendar control um, mm -hmm. that has features around, uh, you know, just basic week and month view, um, range selection, date selection, um, and then also a, a full view controller floor plan mm -hmm. um, that can be pretty easily integrated with Calendar Kit. Um, so you can actually use the Fiori calendar controls to manipulate um, events in Apple calendars natively. Um, we also have uh, some new chart types um, that are available for any of the chart controls that use the chart view. Um, so we added um, stacked columns and also waterfalls, um, which, are, which are very nice. And there's some, some really great um, tap and swipe interactions that are built into those that you get out of the box. Um, and then the last is, is much broader and more significant. And this, this took most of the development team for the, for, the, for the time. And this was related to the map floor plan. Um, so we've had map views in the control since 2. Dot, in the SDK since 2.x. Um, but we've delivered them as what I would describe as overly, overlay views, mm -hmm. meaning I've got an MK map view, and then I add detail panel, and I add a toolbar. And there's a legend view that's presented out of that toolbar. But as a developer, I'm responsible in 2.x for constraining those views um, in, in regular uh, layout. Um, and I'm also responsible for wiring up those buttons to handle presenting the different um, popover view controllers that get displayed for, for showing things like settings or legend or um, clearing all the annotations or zooming into a particular set of annotations. And so these. Overlay views were really, I think, useful, um, and and they look great. They're they're coming out of our Palo Alto design team, um, but they were they did have a lot of boilerplate that went into integrating them into an app. So what we've done is we've gone in and we've pre-integrated them into what we call a floor plan, which is really um, analogous to a view controller. So we actually have a, a Fiori MK Map floor plan view controller that has all of these overlay elements built in. Um, so as a developer, you can just push this onto your view hierarchy, um, or you could use, if you want it to just be a subset of the screen, you could use the child view controller um, or container view controller paradigm, um, to scrape the view off the Fiori control and present it as a sub view in your own control. Um, so that, that was a really significant evolution of the existing map views and makes them, I, I don't know, five times faster to adopt. Like it's, it's a really significant um, increase there. Um, we then went further and added new functionality natively into those floor plans around adding and editing geospatial um, elements. So, um, and, and we'll show a couple uh, screenshots of this here. Um, but the users can actually be you know, viewing, uh, viewing annotations, tapping on annotation views, getting the detail um, information presented in the detail panel. And then um, there's a workflow pattern where the user could tap a plus button, 
and say, I want to add a new geospatial object. Um, and so the developer can specify what types of geospatial objects would be supported, whether these are business objects like assets or whether they're notification types um, as part of your application data. Um, and then we have the screens built in to say, OK, as a user, I want to be able to create a polygon either by tapping on points on the screen you know, um, or actually using the search capabilities to find reverse geocoded um, coordinates. So I could actually type in addresses or um, or specific locations that the iOS map um, search uh, system can can reverse geocode for us, mm -hmm. um, or some combination thereof. Um, and then, so we handle everything about um, you know the undo redo of that, um, and finally outputting that newly created um, geospatial object um, that the developer can then um, you know, submit to a third party content management system or integrate into the current data set. Oh, excellent. Well, I'm going to take us just uh, to end our conversation back to uh, one of the things you mentioned earlier on, which was uh, charting and some of the, the chart types. So what are the, the chart controls that we've got and what are the sort of situations that you'd use them in? Yeah, yeah. Um, we have, we have really three main chart scenarios. We have uh, the full screen floor plan. And this is where you have, you have a title. You might have some summary information, like some subtotals for the, for the different categories versus data series. You have the plot itself, and then you may have a legend. Um, so this is actually a floor plan component. Um, and so you would uh, I think it's the FUI chart floor plan view controller. Um, and so this is what you should use if you have a full screen chart scenario. Um, we have a set of cards, which are collection cells. Um, and these are kind of rounded corner cards um, that you'll see either um, running in a, in a horizontal scroll layout or overflowing in a flow layout. <clears throat> and there we have. Um, we have the FUI uh, chart card, the KPI card, and the KPI progress card. Um, those would be the appropriate controls to use for that type of um, kind of overview, uh, like a, a detailed card for an analytic. Mm -hmm. um, there is a helper control. It's a table view cell that has an embedded collection view with the correct layout parameters built in. Um, I think it's the FUI card collection table view cell. Um, and that that is a an easy way to take a set of cards and put it into a larger overview table view. Um, and then the last scenario is actually uh, charts that are presented in an object header. Uh, the object header has a property called the detail content view. Um, and we have we have an FUI uh, chart header content view. Um, which has some KPI information and some title information, and then also a plot. Um, and so that would be the appropriate uh, view for that scenario. Uh, the last, so I would say that 90% of scenarios can be fulfilled by one of those three, um, either the chart floor plan, the, uh, the cards, and the card collection table view cell, uh, or the chart header uh, content view. The, the last ones which are optional um, would be actually a set of views that are that are elements of the floor plan. Um, so if for some reason the floor plan is not suitable, you, um, you only need uh, the plot, for instance. Um, we do have the uh, the chart plot view as a public element that you could access directly. Um, we also have a table view cell that embeds that. Um, and so those could be suitable for some scenarios. Um, but again, in general, I would start with the chart floor plan, um, either as the view controller or also um, we have a table view cell that encapsulates that as well. Cool. Well, I think we are going to come back for another co-talk and go a little bit deeper into some of these. Uh, but Stan, thank you for, for hanging out with me today. Yeah, thank you. Good to see you.